Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in today's video, we are working on the D-Max and we're gonna be solving our front tire wear issue once and for all, the bump stop issue that you probably heard just a little bit about if you're active on the forums or on the socials. We're gonna be installing the new part from Fulcrum Suspensions. It's the Super Pro full steering knuckle replacement. This is the full how-to, so without further ado, let's get started. This video is video number two. It's a two-parter. The first version, we go and actually have a look at the problem. So if you haven't watched that video, go and check that one out before this one. It gives you a bit of an idea of what you're doing here. So our first step here is to get everything out of the box and see what we've got. Instructions, knuckle number one, knuckle number two, and some washers. So here they are, here's the two knuckles. These are the stars of the show. Now I'm not gonna go into a whole bunch of detail on how these are designed and all that sort of stuff. Check out the second video if you wanna go into all of that detail. Today, we're all about the how-to. So to get these going, the first step we need to do is grab our floor jack. We need to jack up the car, make sure we've got some chocks on the rear and get our tire off ready to start pulling some bits off. So here we are, we've got the wheel off. We've got everything all nice and safe. Keep your jack underneath there on the cross member just for a little bit of extra safety. We've got our jack stand sitting underneath the chassis and our little third bit, which is the wheel underneath there as well. So the next step really here is to start pulling everything apart, give everything a solid dose of some penetrant. So once you've given everything a good once over, the first thing we wanna take off is our brake caliber. Now there are two nuts. There's one here and there's one on the bottom you're gonna need a 22 mil socket on this. Now these guys are super, super tight. They're, they're, they're about 140 or so when they're all torqued up. So be prepared to grab a breaker bar. If you've got a ugga dugga, definitely pull that out. That's our first step we wanna do. One on the top, one on the bottom, pull that guy out. So once our brake caliper is tucked up all out of the way, the next step we wanna do is just separate from our brake line our ABS speed sensor here as well. It's just a little 10 mil, so you can just disconnect that just to give us a little bit more wiggle room. Because the next thing you wanna do is disconnect these sensors. And you can see here is one of our little bolts here. And then same thing there, there's our speed sensor little bolt there as well. So we wanna undo both of those. And then if you haven't done so already, just disconnect our top sway bar link, which is a 17 millimeter. So there we go, we've got this guy out. Now you might be able to pull that out. If not, you can always get the jack up underneath that ball joint until it raises this up to the point where that'll come out nice and easy. Otherwise you can just put a, a little Phillips head in the end here and give it a bang and that'll come out. The next step we wanna do is to give ourselves a bit more room by taking off our caliper and dust shield here as well. So to do that, we can get a big flat head. That just then can be pushed underneath all the way around our little uh, shield here. So just work your way off all the way around and then what will happen, it will pop off a little bit like that. The good thing is, look how sealed this is. It is clean enough to eat off. And this car has done about 30 odd thousand Ks as well as the Cape trip if you've been following along. So that's pretty cool. I thought that was, uh, I thought that was quite interesting to see how clean that was. From here, you will have a single little grub screw here. It may be in any one of these, but what that does is basically stops this guy from falling on your safety thongs. So just take your time, remove our brake disc and set it to the side. Right, with our brake disc off, the next step is to jump in here and you wanna take out your little ABS sensor here, our wheel speed sensor. So best bet is to grab a pair of these guys, just some multi grips, and you, then you can sort of get in there and gently wiggle it free. So once our speed sensor is out of the way, we've got a couple of things to do, and they're they all these guys now, the split pins. So we've got our big guy on the front of our axle shaft here. You're going to need to use uh, one of the big boy sockets here. This is a 36 mil. Definitely recommend, head down to your local auto store if you don't have one of these, and pick one of them up. They're handy to have. Keep them in the back in case you need to do a CV or something down the track. Just grab your needle nose pliers at this point here, pry our little split pin apart. So once you get that guy out, Get your big boy socket on there, and then just hang it over this guy off. And once our big boy nut is off, our next step is to just do the last couple of castle nuts. So we have this guy here. This is our steering castle nut here. We can separate that now. So same story, remove the split pin and pull that guy off. That one's a 22 millimeter. And then once that is separated, we've only got two more things to do, which is our upper ball joint and our lower ball joint, which is hiding up underneath here. From there, it's just a matter of loosening both of these off. You don't wanna take them all the way out, just drop them down so that the nut here is at the bottom of the thread. Same story on the bottom one there. Then we wanna shock top of our knuckle here 
and same story on the underneath here. Just make sure we're not whacking the boot here at all and it's only the knuckle itself that you're whacking. You wanna get one of your little hammers, something like this, and you wanna be smacking right on there. When you do that, just in the right spot there, the whole thing will just separate. You won't need a ball joint pull or anything like that. That'll separate out and then we can look to remove our whole assembly. Now, top tip, just as you do that though, there is a seal that sits on the inside here. So just be really careful, gently drop it down and then pull it straight out. You don't want the threads here on the axle shaft ripping any of that seal because we're gonna need to reuse it. Now that we've got our factory knuckle out of the way, we can just remove these last four bolts here. They're just a 17 millimeter, so we can get those out of the way. That way then we can separate our actual hub here. This is the sealed hub unit with our wheel bearing and what have you there from our Zuzu. So we can separate that as soon as we've undone those other four. Just be super careful just around here. This seal that is sitting in here, we need to reuse that. So don't go banging that up. Be really careful about that. And then once we've got these four off, we can bang that off from the other side. Now once those four are out, you can remove this assembly from your dust shield component. You can start to see here, it's, it's ready to crack apart. The best bet is just to grab on underneath here, give it a few short sharp taps against the knuckle on the floor there, and it should pop straight out. And here we go, this is what they both look like. This is our full wheel bearing assembly. You wanna make sure all of this stays super, super clean from this point forward. So what we do need to get to though, is our little seal here, and you can see the little yellow bit here. You want to be super careful here. Grab a big flat head like uh, this guy here and then you want to gently gently give it some gentle love taps all the way around without damaging the rubber section and that should just pop straight out. And here it is. Here's our little rubber seal. You can see the sort of the the, the goldy color. That's that's the strength. That's what you want to be whacking. Not any of the rubber because you'll damage it. So from here we need to transplant this guy out of our old OEM knuckle into our nice shiny new knuckle. So from here, it's just a matter of flipping this guy over. Make sure all of this is super clean there once again. A little lick of grease around here won't go astray. It will come with some from the factory, but give that a little bit of a lick. And then what you wanna do is grab your seal and then gently there again, you'll find, just use your, use your finger in there. You'll see where the really hard section is. And then same thing again, gently tap that into place. So once our seal is in, it should be almost flush here, right on the back here, because you need to have room to get your ABS sensor back through. So you can give that kind of a bit of a test fit to see how you're going. Just get it sitting there, poke it through the new hole, and it should be, it should be poking out out the side here. So just give it a bit of a test to make sure that you've gone in far enough on your seals. Once that's all nice and clean and greased up there, we can sit it on top of our new knuckle here and then flip him over. And then there's our four bolt holes. We can start bolting everything back into place. Now from here, it really is just a reverse process of what we did there before. So I won't bore you and go through all of that again in tons of detail. The main things to remember though, as you're going through it is to make sure everything is super clean there again. Get a nice clean cloth and make sure everything here on your axle stub is spick and span. Same with your ball joint surfaces here, top and bottom. And then it's just a rinse and repeat, putting it back together the way that we pulled it apart. Now, key difference here when you are reassembling, before you put your sway bar link into its new home, you need to use the spacer that is provided. That just goes on this side here, a little bit like that. You can just push that one through. Use your jack underneath here, underneath that ball joint to lift up your your lower control arm till that sway bar link all lines up. Once you've got your spacer in there, just like that, you can continue talking everything into place. So that's our next step is to go ahead and talk everything into place, use your little paint pen. And then finally, when it comes to adding all of your split pins, it is recommended to use some brand newies if you've got some handy, particularly for the large ones. If you if you haven't sort of bent them out of shape uh, too badly, you can probably get away with it, but it is recommended that you, you get some nice fresh ones. And there we go, we are all talked up. We've got everything all marked. We know we've got everything right, which is good. And then from here, we've only got one bit left, which is our dust cap here. Just make sure it's all nice and clean in there and there's no bits of dirt or anything. Give this a bit of a once over as well. This guy then gets whacked back on there. Once that's in place, 
There's only one thing left and that's our tire. We can put that guy back into place. You wanna torque your wheel nuts to about the 120 mark and we can drop all of this back on the ground. Now, of course, your final step here is getting a full wheel alignment. That is a mandatory thing because you need to reset the way everything is all set up here. You need that geometry to be spot on because we have changed it. But there you go, that is the full install, the DIY install of the new Fulcrum steering knuckle kit, replacing these guys, replacing the factory units. If if you haven't already, head on over to the channel and check out the data-driven video, the one that goes through all of the ins and outs where we get this guy on the hoist before and after installing, just so you can see how much of a difference that it does make when we've got it all lined up on the laser machine. As always, guys, I want to say a massive thank you to the patrons of Video Show Me How. You guys know you're a bunch of legends. If you're interested in getting involved over there for the monthly and a bit giveaways and the merch and all that sort of stuff, head on over to patreon.com forward slash video show me how. But that's all for this one, guys. As always, always i hope you have an amazing day and i'll see you in the next video cheers guys